So now in this video, I assume you are already really familiar with the NPN bipolar junction transistor switch. That's supposed to say Q right there. Tried to fix it with pen. I uh, accidentally put C. But in uh, any case, the uh, NPN bipolar junction transistor switch, the load is off. In this case, the load is an LED and a protective resistor. And here's the NPN bipolar junction transistor. This is a 2N3904 collector on top where the uh, cathode of the LED is base to that resistor going to the negative rail and then emitter to the negative rail. Since we do not have more than 0.7 volts at the base, we have zero. With the resistor, it's off. If I shift this over, then it turns on. So basic switch stuff. Now, the reason why we're looking at this uh, really quickly is that recently I've been doing videos where we switch, in this case, the same load right there on the emitter side and so we're gonna look at why I was doing that when this is a better uh, switch so now here you can see that we have 5 volts at the power supply right there about 13 milliamps of current approximately we're not too worried about the current but knowing the current does give you some indication what's going on in the uh, circuit and so we got voltage at least all the circuitry on the board and the switch that we just wired here you can see that when it is on we have that full five volts you know maybe we lost a little bit but uh, practically the full five volts across the load right there so now recently i made a or gate video so we can either turn a load over here on if one transistor is turned on or the other one so I have half of the OR gate here where we just have one transistor where we can turn it on and turn the output on we need a pull down resistor and uh, that one is right there but uh, we'll zoom in and we'll take a look at the circuit so right now the LED is on it's bright and uh, it's definitely on and if we move the uh, base resistor here to the negative rail it is definitely off and so we need this is my body giving it a false signal so it's turning on partially but we need a high input for the load to be on so really it looks like it's the same switch circuit for the most part but uh, as you can see here first off we have less current we had 13 before and that's because we do not have the full voltage across the uh, load so I'll quickly uh, grab the multimeter we'll take a look at that so we got the uh, multimeter and we're worried about the voltage across the load so this will work as a switch but as you can see here we lose the base to emitter diode drop so we have basically looks like a volt less than what we did with the other circuit so we're losing voltage across the load so now that brings us to this integrated circuit here this is the uh, 74 HC 32 and uh, the version particular one I have on the board is the MM and it has an N at uh, the end but uh, any 74 HC 32 should have the same pin layout and everything and it has four OR gates right there and they have inputs if one input is high or the other input is high or both of them input high main thing is at least one input has to be high then the output will be high so we're going to use a NPN bipolar junction transistor to feed one of those high or low input signals so now we're just going to use this OR gate right there over here the uh, inputs for all the other OR gates are tied to either the positive rail or the negative rail no current goes through them they just look at the voltage the uh, top input here we have a resistor and that's a 10 kilo ohm resistor going directly to the negative rail that gets zero volts at that input and holds it off the uh, other input right there is to the emitter of the transistor right here so this might be enough for you to see why it's a good idea to have the uh, output of a bipolar junction transistor switch at the emitter because it feeds really nicely over to inputs of something else we have this pull down resistor 
because to keep a low signal, we need to prevent it from floating. This is acting like an antenna, picking up stray signals in the air. So we put that there. Now it's connected to ground. This pin is really bent out of shape, but uh, there we go, went in. So in any case, transistor is held off right now. And so we will move this resistor that's helping to hold the transistor off into the on position. Again, I'm giving it uh, false signals. So it's rapidly turned it on and off. But there you go. We just need a high input at one or the other and the output goes high right there. So now one thing you'll notice is that with this setup, we have less current coming from the uh, power supply. So this isn't completely accurate, but it's a good estimate. And so we're going to look at uh, voltages really quick. So first let's look at the uh, output voltage, the voltage of the LED and its protective resistor coming from the uh, output pin up there. And there you can see it's 4.455. So uh, 4.5 basically. And uh, now we'll compare that with the uh, voltage. I can go to ground anywhere here, but the voltage going to the input pin. And there you can see it's lower. So 4.35. But the main thing is this is a digital integrated circuit. So it's just looking at whether it is above half of the supply voltage of five volts or below the supply voltage of uh, half of the supply voltage, I should say, of five volts. So if it's more than halfway, it's a high input. Less than halfway, it's a low input. That's all it's looking at. So you can see we lost some voltage from the uh, transistor. But uh, since it's an OR gate, we can set this one low. If we set the resistor so that it's going to the positive supply right there, now one of the inputs has a high signal. So again, you can see that uh, we got 11 milliamps of current right there. But if we look at the voltage of the uh, signal, it's a full blown uh, five volts right there. Uh, just a speck of loss and the load again is 4.4 and it was five now it's five five exactly what it was before so we don't need the full supply voltage in this case so we can use it as a switch this circuitry is called an emitter follower and uh, we can use it as a switch because you lose some of the supply voltage but that doesn't matter if it's a digital input where it's just looking at uh, close to the positive supply or close to the negative supply. So now, hopefully that made sense. I really just used, reused a bunch of uh, diagrams for this, but hopefully I still made my point. Uh, the main thing is, sometimes you need a MPN bipolar junction transistor, in this case, as a switch, an off switch, but if you're using it to control something that's looking for a signal, it's hard to put that on the collector side of the NPN bipolar junction transistor where it really works its best as an on off switch for a signal for a weak signal where it doesn't have to be exactly five volts to be on or exactly zero volts to be off an emitter follower works really well you can get uh, it looks like we were only getting like four volts but that's plenty to tell the input that it was on and tell the output to go on which is not influenced by the voltage coming in so that's why you'll often see a uh, bipolar junction transistor working as a switch, but as an emitter follower, where it gives the voltage to the base, but you lose some of that voltage from the uh, base to emitter. And so hopefully that all made sense. And uh, there'll be a lot of examples like this. So hopefully that helps you in the future understand future circuits. But in any case, thanks for watching. Check out one of the other videos. Click like, subscribe, the bell. All that. Donate to Patreon if you can. I put a link down in the description. And I was putting it on the screen, but for some reason they get rid of my link and just put Patreon in general on there. So, in any case, I'll see you in the next video.